Hello everyone, Mike Barber here. Remember this program is tape delayed for many reasons, but you will see it still alive and well. Men, women worshiping, men, women listening to the life changing word of God. It'll touch your heart in many ways. The Mike Barber Ministries, this is our church. This is where we live. Enjoy it because you will be blessed. Amen. <laughs> Good stuff. Gentlemen, as always here, we've been coming here now for, I guess, I don't know, three or four or five years. I don't know. But uh, we always love to pretty much kick off our new year here. And I uh, can't say enough about your chaplain, Chaplain Watkins. I just, I love the Jesus that's in that lady. And uh, give her a great big big thank you if you would please <clears throat> tonight I just want to we got a lot of work to do after this service is over with and these officers have put in a lot of extra time and uh, many of them are not getting paid to do it and I, I want you to know I know that and I appreciate all the extra work and your kindness and uh, on behalf of my staff Mike Morgan Ministries and my wife and I were just honored, 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 honored to be here. And uh, I want us to score a touchdown. Can we do that? Huh? Can we really do that tonight? Amen. There's a scripture in 2 Peter. Let me find it here that I wanna, where I want to start. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 11, it says this. This is the end zone now, okay? Isn't that our goal to get in the end zone? Yeah, the realms only wish they could have. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly. Amen? So God here emphasizes it. An entrance will be supplied to you doesn't matter who you are, abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so how we live here determines what entrance we enter. That's heaven and that's hell. The Bible says that on earth as it is in heaven. So in other words, if you don't find heaven here, you're not going to go to heaven there. There's things that we must do. There's things that we should apply to our life, supplements that will help us get there. There's not a one of you in this room as a kid, your goal was that when I grow up, I want to be in prison. I want to live in prison. I want to stay there for years and years and years. I want to wear nothing but white with a green jacket. <laughs> All I want is prison food for the rest of my life. If that's you, come forward right now because you need some healing. <laughs> There's none of you. And gentlemen, I, I truly don't care and I get a lot of hate letters for this, and I, I don't care about that. But I truly don't care why you're in here. I understand there is a price to pay for wrong. I got that. And I'm in agreement with that. But that doesn't mark you and me for life unless we allow it to mark us for life. Amen? Amen? In all of my years, 39 years altogether of going inside prisons, I can honestly look you in the eye and tell you, I don't remember one time, other than maybe a handful of inmates, they were in a certain part of that unit, were just filled with prescription medicine that they wasn't themselves. 
but I have walked into the worst of the worst and I have never had one inmate disrespect me. I can honestly say that. And that so honors me. Because when I pray, when I come in here, I, 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 I always pray. I don't take it for granted. But God, let every one of these men, let, let them see that I really want to be here. Now, I know we got cameras but gentlemen, this is only maybe 30% of my life. I go into prison all the time without cameras, nothing. I don't care about this. But it is a means of ministry beyond. And I'm thankful for that. All I'm trying to say, I am so convinced that every single one of you, you good guys, and every one of you, you want to do right. You want to live right. You want to respect everybody. There's no doubt in my mind. But for whatever reason, too many of you, you're caught over here in this trap called the flesh. The world. And so you allow your image to represent more of the world than to represent him. And you have allowed this bondage to consume you that if I put on this image of Christ, I'll lose all my homeboys. I'll lose my family. I'll lose my friends. And you know what? You're probably right. But I ask you this question. What have you really lost? See, I let the devil lie to me for years. I was completely convinced as a young man that I could not play the game of football as a man of God. I interviewed Wade Phillips, the defense coordinator for the Rams. His first year in the, in, the, in the NFL as a professional coach was the same year I entered in the NFL, 1976, with the same team, the Houston Oilers, who his dad, Bum Phillips, his dad. Now, this is my reputation. I saw him in the middle of this hundreds and hundreds and thousands of media, and I finally get to him, and I'm about to ask him a question. And the very first thing out of his mouth, hey, Mike Barber, when we finally got you to quit fighting all the time, you turned out pretty good. That was the first thing out of his mouth. I said, man, what a way to be remembered of. He didn't say anything about my playing. The first thing he said, hey, when we finally got you to stop fighting, What am I saying? We all got a past. And I can just tell you, gentlemen, that I want to score a big time touchdown here. And I want all of you to know our past is our past. Amen? Amen. And it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. In 2 Peter chapter 2, Verse 2, it says this, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Now, you got to understand, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, guys, I'm going to be about another 20 or so minutes. Please give me your best. Preach to me with your eyes. Don't be talking to anybody. Preach to me with your eyes. Because I believe every word that I'm saying to you. I had that reputation as a fighter. I had that reputation. I was an East Texas redneck. I was taught to see color. And to God be the glory, I got delivered from that sickness. I don't
don't see color anymore. Everyone, you're my brother, and I'll fight for you. I'll stand beside you. I don't care what your past is. And I'll be honest with you, that affected me for a little bit when Wade said that. But that's my past. That's not who I am anymore. Now, don't get me wrong. You jump on me, you better be pretty good. <laughs> Mom ain't made no fool here. You might bring you sack lunch. It might take you a little bit. You understand? <laughs> All right, so have we got a true story. Guy on death row, Florence, Arizona. I'm down death row, guy my size, human tattoo. Got three inches from my nose. Hey, Christian man, when I haul off and hit your blankety, 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 spitting in my face while he's talking, you're going to turn the other cheek. I got about an inch from his nose. I said, go for it. I hadn't read that far in the Bible yet. <laughs> so help me. I'm not talking about a wussy thing here. I, I'm talking about a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ that makes you into a man that no bench press can. I've seen guys that's got legs coming out of their shirt sleeve. But they ain't got the strength to pick up a Bible. So the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied to you. That means for all of you, okay? That's good, Mike. You're our first pick. You're a good athlete. But Mike, if you don't know this playbook, your ability will never get you on the field. Gentlemen, Grace and peace be multiplied to those who seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If you want to go ahead and live your life the way you want to live it, That's your choice. But to those of you that have had enough, Amen. and I think this gym is packed full of men that have had enough. Amen. I really believe that. I really believe that this unit can have a special revival in it, and revival means men of God coming together. That's what revival means. It means coming together, many in number, but one in spirit. We leave our denomination behind because all it does is create division. We leave our religion behind. With all due respect, there's not but one God, and he's defined by his son named Jesus. Jesus. Where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There are many gods, but one God, and is defined by his son, Jesus. And that's what this preaching is all about. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. You see, guys, most of you in here, you quote the scripture before I finish. Would you quit your preaching? <laughs> that just tells me you know. And so in other words, for this grace and peace to be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us, this same power is given to every one of us, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Now, here comes the promises. In verse 5, as we get into the supplements of God, 
but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith. So gentlemen, first of all, you've got to have faith. What are you doing, sir? Are you, is that sign language? Ah, I like it. Get that on camera. I like that. I wish I'd have thought of that. Amen. Thank you, sir. Give that guy a hand. Amen. So, gentlemen, the, the first thing, the first thing is we got to have faith. Everybody right here, I'm a jealous speaker. Right here. You got to have faith. You got to believe that Jesus is who he says he is. That's faith. That's our foundation, is faith. Do you believe by faith that Jesus is the Lord of all? Amen. Do you? Amen. If you believe that, put your right hand in the air. If you truly, truly believe it, put your left hand up now with it. And if you really, 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 really believe it, look to the top of this gym for three seconds. Three, two, one, put your hands down. Jesus just took your picture. He, he didn't use Kodak film. He used Holy Ghost film. Amen? Amen? And so by faith, I believe you that you have the faith inside of you. Now, the scripture says in verse 5, to add to this faith. And here is what it says. Make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith, number one, the scripture says, with moral excellence. At this moment, I have all I need. I am full. That's what moral excellence means. Moral excellence means I am going to live my life the best that I can. Get honest with yourself. Get honest with yourself. Do you always compliment this place? Or maybe many times you complicate it. Or better than that, contaminate it. So you can't have moral excellence inside of you if you create problems in this prison. Oh, we got quiet in here. I can't have moral excellence inside of me if I come to these places and I create trouble by not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I have a time to start and I have a time to stop. And I'll be honest with you, on purposely, I always do my best to stop early. Gives me to let them know I'm thinking about them. So you got to ask yourself, you got the spot. My wife gives me all these dead gum vitamins. I don't want them. You don't have a choice. Stand up, babe. This five foot one tells me what to do. We had had a long day a few days ago and I propped up in bed reading a little bit and she throws this vitamin magazine at me. I said, now what? 20 minutes later, she's ordering another vitamin <laughs> to supplement the six miles that we basically do every day together, trying to make me eat better, all this kind of stuff. And the bottom line is she's right. Oh, I hate to admit that. I'm in trouble now. I'll take that back right there, yeah, okay? And so, gentlemen, understand, to our faith, we have to have moral excellence. And another, the next supplement is, we add to our faith knowledge, the Scripture says. Verse 2, may God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow, what? In your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. So a supplement for your life is knowledge. How do you do that? Gentlemen, you got to go to church. You got to get where the word is being taught and preached. You show me a person that never goes to church, I'll show you a person that's got all kind of problems. And the majority of them will hide it. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great. No, they're not. So a supplement is moral excellence. I'm going to be the best person that I can possibly be. I'm going to be a man that people can trust, respect. 
and I'm going to be that man that I'm going to try to develop as much knowledge as I can on who I'm supposed to be. And the next supplement is you add to your faith self-control. Whew, I'm guilty there. It wasn't that many years ago. President and founder of a worldwide prison ministry. I pull up to a pedestrian stop sign. Here comes this dude walking across the street. I guess I didn't stop quick enough for him, so he purposely slows down with a backpack, looking at me like that as he's walking. He finally gets on. I drive on through. I knew. Now, I'm president and founder of this ministry right here, man of God. <laughs> Stand up and up here and preaching to you guys how to live for Jesus. Being honest with you, I knew not to look in that rearview mirror. And sure enough, bang. Why? The devil remembers and makes me remember my biggest weakness. All my years of fighting, if you shot me the finger, it's on. I put my car in park in the middle of the road. I didn't pull off the road. I jumped out and chased that dude down. And I'm right on top of him, and all of a sudden, I catch myself. What in the world are you doing? What about your testimony, Mike? And I immediately turned away and walked away. I told him, you better be glad I'm a Christian. I'm a man of God. I told him that. You know what he did? When I got about 15 yards away from him, he done took his backpack off. Now, he was a little bitty guy. I could have put him in my back pocket and forgot about him. You understand? He took his backpack off and started yelling to me, Hey, Mark, come back here. I'm not afraid of you. Come on. Rubbing it in my face because he knew I wasn't going to come back. Hey, I get this self-control, this self-discipline, but it's one of the supplements that is so important for our future. You can be having a good day in here, a good week, good weeks, and all of a sudden turn the corner and all hell breaks loose. I got gotcha. you. You have no idea how much I got you. It wasn't that long ago, guys. Again, this dude deliberately pulls up in front of me and takes where I was about to park. <laughs> She's scared to death. I jumped out of the car. Sucker pulls his pistol out. Guarantee he thinks to this day, that's what scared me. The sad thing about it, that didn't scare me. There again, I froze again. I said, what are you doing? You're supposed to be representing me, not the flesh. If there's anybody that stands in front of you, and I'm just being blunt honest with you guys. Hey, if there's anybody that stands in front of you that knows, I know. This supplement right here is so vital for every one of you. Self-control. It's hard. It's difficult. But look at the gift when we succeed with self-discipline, self-control. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me. A long last night away. Listen, there's no substitute. It is a supplement that we must have by faith. The next supplement, I want to have a few more. By faith is patient 
endurance. We got to have endurance. We got to have endurance. Jesus endured the cross. Why? For the joy that was set before him. What have you got set before you? Come on, guys, as much as you can, be still. I don't have but about another 10 or so minutes. Please, no moving around. I want everybody's eyes right here. The devil do everything he can to distract. And these gentlemen here, they couldn't be more respectful. So, this, you know, they're, doing, they're fine. All of you are so respectful. But Jesus said, listen to his scripture. He endured the cross for one reason, for the joy that was set before him. What was that joy? Setting at the Father's right hand. What's your joy? So we all got to have a joy. My joy is when I walk through those pearly gates. This is funny. But I tell the Lord this all the time. I want my mansion to be a log cabin. And every time I know that I know somebody is giving their life to Jesus Christ, I by myself, I'll look up and say, Lord, add another log on. What, what, what you're endure, what you're going to endure. See, you've got to have a goal, guys. You've got to have a goal. As a little bitty kid from White Oak, Texas, population 1,200 on a good day. I was 14 years old before I realized my name wouldn't get wood that we live so far in the country. <laughs> we were so poor, we spelt it with three O's. Me and my seven uh, siblings, on weekends, we'd split up and go to different weddings just to collect the rice to have something to eat during the week. That's not poor, that's poor. But I spoke my destiny. One day I will play in the NFL and boom, I made it. Because I endured all the tour days and the injuries and etc. What's my endurance today? I can tell you my wife and I, our, our endurance is to go into many prisons as we can and coach you up and make you realize that you're the head not to tell, that you're awesome, you're one of a kind. What you put into your life is what you'll get out of. So my supplement is self-control. I got to have it. I got to have endurance. This ministry hits me and hits me and hits me. I've been on the front page of the LA Times as a cult leader because I had a big revival in the largest youth prison in, in the state of California. And the chaplain in there despised what I represented, believe that or not, and he had a senator that was a friend, so he calls a senator, and I make the front page of the L.A. Times. Cultic leader, former Houston Oilers, Los Angeles M play, uh, player. <laughs> you got to endure to the end. I've had three people put in prison using my name. One guy got a 10-year sentence. I had a lady accuse me of being the father to her son. It took me almost four years to finally win. And it wasn't me. Guy's name was Michael Barber. His middle name was different than mine. They sent me his birth certificate. I sent them. Middle name, this is real easy, different than mine. His birthday is a different month. Same day, same year, but different month. Two times, not once, two times, I had to go to a DNA test, and it proved it wasn't me. And I got accused both times of having somebody that looked like me go in with a baseball cap out on and do my test for me. I know what enduring means. I've been blasted beyond words. But you see, I'm not going to let anything Stop me from doing this. <laughs> Nothing. So as I bring this to the close, my supplement, I must have endurance. Guys, we must have endurance to do right. We make up our mind that from this point on, I will compliment this place. I will never be guilty of contaminating it. I'm going to change my attitude. If I change my attitude, I can help change the atmosphere. Atmosphere does not change me, I change it. Because of the supplement. 
And then the next supplement is godliness. Everything about me. Everything about me. True godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. I'm content with godliness. My wife can tell you, go to the Super Bowl. I'm recognized quite a bit still, even though I'm an old man. I see a lot of the guys I'm played with and against. They're in that limelight, and it's nothing but a flesh world. Drinking, carousing. Saw a couple of guys. I know they're married. They got that little lady beside them. Party time. Whoo, look at them legs. They go all the way up. Can you imagine that? And I wouldn't trade places with what I got. I don't have near the money they got. People think, oh, Barbara, you do all this. You got all this money. Come hang out with me. I don't have any money. I don't own a home. I rent a place. I don't have my own vehicle. It's a, it's a, it's a rent. I don't own, own. I don't own anything. And I wouldn't trade places with anybody. Being godly to the best of my ability means being honest. I've tried to be honest with y'all tonight. I've not arrived yet. I'm a real man. Outside linebacker Bob Swinson, Denver Broncos. We're good friends except for four quarters. <laughs> Hit him one time. Mm, you know, when they do that, that's good music there. That's rich. Put him on his back. Earl Campbell ran for about 62 yards, best I remember, for a touchdown. Close ears, babe. <laughs> Circuit put his fist right in my nuts. <laughs> Hopefully, y'all have enough wisdom to cut that. He changed my whole voice. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Jumping Jack. Jumping Jack. Here we go. Here. <laughs> what I do, I didn't care if it meant bring back the touchdown. I put my fist right where he put his fist. <laughs> and we walking side by side to the end zone. He's looking at me. Barber. What? I didn't think you'd do that. Really? He said, man, I was up all night long, jacked up to play against you. He said, I've got the TV on 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm flipping the channels, and lo and behold, there you are giving your testimony on the Billy Graham crusade how God has changed your life. And I didn't think you'd do it. We're still walking. I said, Bob, pray for me. I got a lot of growing to do. Yeah. <laughs> True story. True story. But you see, my supplement is godliness. I want to do everything I can in Jesus' name to be as godly as I can. I'm not talking about so godly that I'm useless. I can't stand these people. Oh, yes, hallelujah, bless God. Oh, I just want to say, God, kill them and get them out of their misery, you know? I'm talking about we live in a real world and real stuff happens. Amen? Amen? These are all supplements that we must have. And then the last one I'll stop on this is brotherly affection. That means kindness. That means respect for one another. These are all supplements. And then the last one is must be love, honor with each other. And so real quickly, I've lost my time here. Number one, our supplement is <clears throat> moral excellence. And then the next one is knowledge. And then the next one is self-control. These are all supplements. And then patience, endurance. And then godliness. And then brotherly affection. I care for you. I care for your well-being. What can I do to be a blessing to you? I won't say what prison. Very, very, very violent inmate. Never will get out of prison unless an absolute miracle. 
cuffs all the way down. Long story short, ministered, radically saved, baptized. Doesn't change his location. He got a lot to prove. Fortunately, he's with the right warden. The warden believes in him. Made him understand that doesn't change your location. And he understands that completely. Tears in his eyes. How God could love me for all the harm that I have done to people. My wife and I just the other day, we jumped in our car. We got some material for him. We drove two and a half hours for me to walk in back in that super seg just to hand him some material. And I'm not bragging on me. It's just a brotherly love that's genuine. And I gave him that material, spent about 30 minutes with him, left, jumped back in the car, drove back to Houston. See, brotherly kindness is blessing others. And the big victory here, and I'm done in two minutes, the big victory here is when you can be a blessing to others and if your name never, ever, ever gets mentioned, it's okay. It's okay. So help me God. All these supplements are working inside of me. Today, if I never, ever, 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 ever got recognized again as a professional football player for 10 years, I could care less. But I do care about being known as a man of God. Amen. And you may be in prison. But prison doesn't have to be in you. That's a choice. And from one end to the end, from the front to the back, let's make this prison different. By every some one of you grabbing these, Second Peter chapter 1, starting with verse 5, you can read those again. And when you do that, God makes that entrance into heaven for each of us beyond words. Say this with me, Heavenly Father. With all of my heart, with, my heart, with my, mouth, my mouth, I genuinely, I genuinely confess, you, confess you. And with my heart, with my heart I, genuinely I genuinely receive you, receive you. As, my Lord as my Lord and my Savior. And my Savior. In, Jesus name, In Jesus' name, cleanse me, cleanse me. from the top, of my head, the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Of my feet. Fill, me Fill me with these supplements. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. I, thank I thank you for this new day. This new day. To God be, the glory. God be the glory. Amen, amen. and amen. Give yourselves a great big hand. Thank you for watching this awesome program. Remember, it was take delayed, and yet it's so special just to watch. I know you were touched, and we're touched, because the only way this can happen is through our awesome partners that understand where we go, our congregation, the inmates, can't respond financially. But our partners, they do. They send us, even into the least of them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. And we'll be back with you very soon, once again.